Hi, everybody, and welcome to the TGIF Business Networking Hangout. I'm your host, Melanie McDonald. I'm a brand identity and social outreach consultant. We have a great show today. Our topic today is business women's empowerment groups. Can empowerment groups become a crutch? And I have an awesome panel of guests here to help us talk about that that topic. So starting from left to right, let's get started and have the panel introduce themselves. Christine, let's start with you. Hi, everyone. Good morning, Melani, and good morning to the panel and the audience. I'm really excited to be here today. I'm very passionate about empowering women, so I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Personally, my name is Christine L. Bowen. I'm the co-creator of the Create Live Be movement. It's a mission to inspire entrepreneurs to reset their creative mindsets for success. What does that mean? Live life at its highest potential. Awesome. Thank you. Dr. Simone. Yes. Hi, my name is Dr. Simone Ravis, and I am a certified business and life coach and a brain coach. Yes, there is such a thing. And I work with small business owners and entrepreneurs, and I use proven brain-based techniques to help them change their thinking, their beliefs, their behaviors, and their um, emotions so that they can attain business and personal success with ease. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Simone. Next up, we have Kitty Walker. Hi, I'm uh, Kitty Walker. I'm based in London. I'm a digital strategist. I run a company over here with my business partner. I'm really passionate about empowering women because I come from a, a background of domestic abuse um, and I run a social enterprise um, empowering women to use IT skills. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. Lisa. Lisa Hello, Alani. I'm so happy to be here, and uh, it's a pleasure to meet everyone on the panel. My name is Lisa Vonsino, and I am a marketing and social media strategist and consultant and manager, and my business is Sundance Social Media, and I also am on the steering committee of the Women's Collaborative for Colorado and have been involved in women's organizations for quite a long time. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us, Lisa. Sure. Next up, we have Melanie Hall. Hi, Milani. Thank you for inviting me, and, and hello to my fellow panelists. I am the owner and CEO of Big Uptick Social Marketing, and I consult and train personal, uh, people and small businesses to increase their online presence with digital dignity. And we have, I am part of a uh, weekly HOA with Kitty Walker and it's called Women in Business Today which is I guess empowering and then I also have that same night Lights Camera HOA which is empowering people who want to get more involved with HOAs for their cause. Thank you so much Melanie and thank you for joining us. Next up we have Nate Cunningham, the male voice on our panel today. <laughs> Hey, what's up? Yeah, you may have noticed I'm not a woman, uh, but thanks so much for inviting me here. Hopefully I can offer some perspective and uh, my opinion to help your cause along anyway. Um, so yeah, I'm Nate Cunningham. I'm in Colorado and I help people on Google+, Plus, whether you're a novice or beginner or intermediate, whatever. Um, I want to help people in other social media integrate what they're doing there into Google+, Plus and become familiar with it and just how easy it really is to instantly start a call with colleagues, friends, family from across the world. Uh, that's what I do. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us, Nate. Next up, we have Rain Dowell. Rain, please unmute yourself and go, go for your introduction. Hi, my name is Rain Dowell. I'm with Social Media Strategy now. And I'd like to help uh, small businesses, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs um, use the power of Google Plus and YouTube Hangouts to grow their online presence. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. And once again, thanks to the whole panel for joining us. The reason I asked you all here today is because, as many of you mentioned, you're all all about empowering women in business to help them grow, to give them the tools they need. So the first question I'm going to ask is going to be sort of our introduction, and I'm going to give everybody a chance to answer it. But 
Melanie Hall, you kind of touched on it first because you said that you do the lights, camera, HOA, for example, which is an empowerment tool that helps people learn how to use HOAs. So my question to start with is, what is your definition of a women's empowerment group? For me, the definition of a business women's empowerment group is a group that is filled with women who have knowledge, skills, advice, and tools to offer to the other women in the group. Here, here's how you use your WordPress website. Here's how you use Google+. Here's a great tip for you know office organization, and that empowers women to further their business. But when I was looking for women's empowerment groups to join, I often found that instead of going in and finding lots of those kinds of posts, I was finding about 90% rah-rah, spread your wings and you can fly, men <laughs> posted. And not a lot of content that I could actually take and put into use. So for me, that's what the definition of a business women's empowerment groups is. It, where we get the tools and the value, and instead of finding the MEMS. So let me go ahead and start with, Melanie, since I mentioned to you, let's start with you. What is your definition of a business women's empowerment group? Melanie, I would ditto what you said with the addition of men can be inc included in empowering women. Yes. And because uh, men have daughters and sisters, and, and if, they, if they truly want to have their daughters and sisters and maybe aunts and nieces, whatever the, the female side of the family, if they want to help them succeed, they should be a part of um, empowering their, um, the females in their family. And if it's a formalized group, I, I do believe in formalized groups uh, because you can get the you can get the insight of more than one person which is yourself and to me uh, I think women's and women empowerment groups get a bad rap because we don't meet on the golf course and discuss business hmm. as tradition as traditionally known it's you know it's like uh, that's where traditionally men in business get to hang out and relax and talk about their things in a in a place where nobody else can overhear so I think golf games are empowering to men because that's just what I consider them I mean a lot of business happens on the golf course and women we we form these groups and sometimes they go off track with the uh, building of self-esteem which can be confused with uh, forgetting about the important tools to help us with our business growth. Awesome. It's interesting that you mentioned the golf course. I have to agree with you. I live in an area near Palm Springs and there's a lot of golf courses here. And yes, the general managers, the places I used to work, used to often go out to the golf course and meet with each other and do business there. They really did. Since you mentioned the men, let's go to Nate next. Do you have anything to add to this, Nate? Uh, yeah, well, perhaps I'm shooting my own self in the foot, but I do not golf. Um, <laughs> nor do I. Colorado, it's kind of cold. Yeah. <laughs> so, but there's still golf courses everywhere. I can't go to buy milk without passing like three golf courses. Anyway, yeah. So you touched on it at the beginning. When I think women's empowerment, I think kind of motivation, self-esteem, these things. When I think women empowerment in business, I think practical application. This is where rubber meets the road. It's beyond self-esteem and, and simple resource sharing. It's how do we do this? How do we make this work? We have our business mindset. So that's what I really think, and uh, that, that's what you touched on. So I would also ditto the ditto of what you said, and uh, I, I support that fully. And uh, also, like... Um, like was said, I do have a daughter who will hopefully one one day be a woman in business. So I'm going to do the best I can as my male support role and her parent to prepare her and you know certainly work on the self-esteem and motivation and everything else as part of her life, but also direct her in that business sense as well. So when and if she decides to go that route, um, she's prepared and I've done my job. Well, you know, I think you really raised a good point there where you said, I think of women's empowerment group 
as the motivation and inspirational ones, but when you say business women's empowerment groups, then it turns into the tools and the resources for running business. So I think that's kind of an interesting distinction. I'm going to go to Lisa Vonsino next. What, what are your thoughts here? Well, my thoughts are that for many years, men had groups and women didn't have groups. And even some of the well-known groups such as Rotary, they didn't accept women until I think either the 70s or the 80s. I think 1987 was a big year for a lot of these traditionally men's groups allowing women in. And you know, many years ago, or you know, the 40s or 50s, women were discouraged from working. It was, they were looked down upon. It was a slight to their husband to work. So there's been there's a lot of history that's involved in women getting together. And maybe the word empowerment, uh, the, most of the groups that I run into are called networking groups as opposed to empowerment groups. And I'd agree that there's a big range in terms of groups. Some are better than others. And you really have to find the unique one for whatever your needs are. And you know, you touched on something else there. Maybe it's the, the term when I saw a lot of business women's empowerment groups listed and I thought, oh great, maybe what I'm really looking for is the business women's networking groups. Mm -hmm. And that could be part of it right there. Let's see, Kitty, let's go to you next. What are your thoughts? Um, I got myself into an awful lot of trouble on um, Women in Business today because I invited the first ever male spotlight guest. <laughs> <laughs> I got jumped on by the community. Um, so I have a real problem with women only groups, men only groups. You know, I, I had the same problems as you did, Milani. I joined a few, quite a few women's groups and I found that they were very rah, rah, rah. And I thought, I, to myself, I thought, oh, maybe it's a cultural thing because we, you know, we don't have cheerleaders and stuff in the UK. It's not something that we do. Maybe that's just a US style. Um, but obviously, I'm incorrect. It, it's an issue that we're we're all finding. But I do also find that when I join offline women's groups, it's often quite difficult. They get quite clicky, even if they are business orientated. Um, so I'm very much for integrated groups. Yes, find a women's network, support network if you can, but don't close your mind off to joining one that has men as well. Right. And I agree with you with you a whole lot there. I think one of the reasons I was looking at the women's groups was because I had had feedback from my clients, and I enjoy working with both men and women, but I had feedback from some of the women that they feel very comfortable working with me as opposed to how they feel working with a man sometimes. And so I thought, okay, well, let's look at some women's groups. Dr. Simone, your thoughts? I agree with a lot of what's been said. I think you have to look at the title of the group and really differentiate the support groups from the networking groups, from the empowering group, empowerment groups. That has a lot to do with it. You have to know what you're getting into. And you know, put your feet in, try it out. If it's not for you, go somewhere else. I've been fortunate to find some very, very good women's groups that combine the empowerment and supportive aspect with information, business information. I do not agree with what was said about just having a business mindset and because that is impossible. Our emotional brain, the part of our brain that's in charge of our emotions is much more powerful than that which is in charge of logic and, and rationality and things of that nature. So. The emotional parts need to be taken care of, and for women still, there is a lot of anxiety and incredible stress around working. They feel much more guilty still if they take time off from work than do men. They have still the problems about balancing family and work. They have much more stress around that than men. So I think that some of these groups are quite necessary for the women who really have issues on that end of things. You know, work on that, get that going, then you can then the people can focus on the business and what's at hand. But 
government is actually giving somebody the authority or the power to do something. And it's about letting them control their own life and claiming of their own rights. So I love women's empowerment groups that focus on that issue. And my favorite word, of course, of all is self-empowerment. Because if we, it's best to be able to rely upon yourself, but a lot of people aren't at that level. So they need the other, some of the emotional support. Thank you, Dr. Simone, for that perspective. Those are some things I hadn't thought about before. Christine, your turn. <laughs> you know, I, as a co-founder of a women's network, you know this, Melani, uh, Total Package Women's Network, I, I'm looking at this from two perspectives. I, I'm listening to everything everyone has said already, and I agree with all of it, actually. I believe as women, I have to echo Dr. Simone, as women, we tend to be on the more emotional side of our brains. So I do believe it's important to be a part of a women's support group, empowerment group. But I think there are two roles that need to be played. If you're going to create a women's network, I think it's important to be clear about what the mission of the network is so that the member, the person, the woman who's seeking help or support or a network will understand clearly what this group is about. What is this group about? And based on their personal needs, they can affiliate themselves with that network. With that said, with our network, I did find, I, I am finding in my industry actually, which is um, network marketing, which is an industry for women, it's an industry that's designed for women. When you look at the top 10 income earners in the industry, they're mostly men. <laughs> Oh, sorry, hang on. Thank no you. problem. Yeah, so there is a disconnect for women in their emotional thinking that sometimes, most times, prevent them from moving forward in business and even being able to focus on business. So I do believe that a holistic approach is best for women. And I also agree with men should be a part of that nurturing as well. Thank you. Wow. I got a lot of answers right off the bat there with this first question. Two different perspectives and so many great points. And I think it was really important what you said, Christine, that we need to, as owners of a group, if we are running a group, make the mission statement very clear about what kind of group this is so that people seeking out the group know what you're about and what kind of support you're offering. So this kind of brings me to question number two. What is the desired amount of emotional and spiritual support for women in general? What's considered the norm versus when does it go into she needs therapy territory? So with a lot of what you were saying that we are emotional creatures and we come from a history of not being allowed to work or being looked at as a down when we were going to work and coming from that kind of a history, how much of the emotional and spiritual and motivational support is normal versus when does it go into, okay, she just kind of needs some therapy. And I guess the first person I'm going to talk to today would be Dr. Simone as she has a psychology background. So, <laughs> Dr. Simone. Well, it's really interesting that you brought up that question. I love it. You know, when is just too much, just too much. I wanted to talk about the about different types of people, and this is there's actually a study that was done about two types of people: people who are called instrumental, who are very oriented to the task and want answers, and are action oriented and very confident. Instrumentals, and then there were expressives, um, people who focused more on were, were more emotional and wanted more emotional support and things of that nature. What was interesting was they gave those two groups three different types of sort of interventions or uh, groups to join. And while I would consider Melania Yu fairly instrumental, and for in that group, there was a lot of them that preferred the middle level of emotional support and in the expressive, they prefer the highest level of emotional support. 
But overall, including both types of people, they all prefer the highest level of emotional support. Hmm. That's really interesting. Yeah. Okay. So there is a big desire for that out there. It's a very necessary thing. It's wired into our brains. I think, as, as you know, I mentioned before, if that is taken care of, then we're open to being able to be our best in terms of business. And we do need the groups that are, you know, answer this question, how do I do a Google Hangout? How do I, what do I do on YouTube, et cetera? Dr. Simone, but, do you know, did they do men in that study as well? Yeah. Yes. And what were their results? Were they similar? Hmm, interesting. I'm going to go to Nate here. Yep. Nate, when you are looking for a group to join, do you also look for the motivational and emotional support? And how, how important do you think that is with your male colleagues? Do they value it as much as the women, generally speaking? Um, from my perspective, I, I probably wouldn't say as much. Or, or if they do, it's something that's not spoken about as much or openly, but I mean, you know, we are emotional beings. Whether you're male or female, we, we are emotional creatures, some more than other. I'm sure there's some men that are way more emotional than women and vice versa, but as a general rule, men are just not that, um, you know, emotional oriented, especially in business. So to answer, I think, the, the actual question that was asked, though, um, when, is too, when is it too much? And I would say if the primary objective for male or female, whatever, if the primary objective is business or entrepreneurship, then that's the focus. So include as much emotional or spiritual or other support as needed, uh, but when it starts severely impacting that primary objective, which is business, that's perhaps where some line is drawn. So up until that part where it impedes your primary objective, uh, I think that would be where I would draw a line. Okay. Anybody else who wants to comment, please raise a hand. I'll go ahead and call on you next. Melanie. <laughs> Make sure it's close to your face because in the thumbnails that's all I can see. <laughs> okay. uh, I wanted to echo what Nate said when, uh, you know, it's hard to find a balance within that group when you need to support um, the, the main mission or focus of the networking or the empowerment group. Uh, because you know that you have people within that group that do have a, a some proportion of need to feed their emotional balance and I've been in groups where the best balance was we stuck we uh, we played on 90 percent of the business objective but we did have 10 percent of maybe uh, an inspiring thought moment you know that was part of the agenda so that that met the, that met some type of need for those that needed that motivational or inspirational moment. Oh, awesome, thank you. Thank you for adding that. I saw some other hands going up. Kitty. Um, I just wanted to say really that it's a balance, isn't it? And I agree with everything that Nate and Milani and Dr. Simone said. But I also think, you know, we're in the day of relationship marketing. We're not transactional marketers. You have to show your personality. You have to show who you are. But you also have to be fully aware of what is professional and what's not professional. And it's so important to not be two people because that, you know, completely leaks through on the Internet. If you're one person in one group and one person in another, and then you have people in common across both of those groups, you've got a major issue. So I think you just have to keep it real and know your boundaries. Good points, good points, thank you. Rain, did I see a hand up or no? Um, I think these are all uh, excellent, excellent points that everybody's provided. Um, and I suppose because groups are um, an organic, growing, changing, living, thing, uh, being extensions of people, um, I suppose if, if, if something just doesn't feel right or it feels like some, you know, it, whether you're an instrumental, uh, you know, well if you're an ex instrumental and you feel an expressive seems, you feel drained, then just, I, as you said, know your boundaries and, and uh, you know, know when to say, okay, well that's, 
you know, that's not going to work for me. <laughs> I'm focused on doing this or that. And same for the expressives. Um, to recognize that when someone is an instrumental and is um, has a goal or is is focused on something um, that you know that's their focus, that's their goal. And while it's it, there's nothing wrong with being expressive, um, there will have to be another outlet in order to get their needs met as well. So it, it's it's a just being as as aware as you can of your your own needs as well as those uh, around you or in groups. Thank you so much, Rain. And, and actually, some of what you said kind of touches on a question that I'm going towards, which is, can then these emotional supports that we so obviously need, according to all these studies and everybody in the panel, can they become a crutch to where we end up depending on it in order to get through rather than kind of taking it as motivation here and there is it something we end up depending on when I go into a business group personally and this is just me speaking for myself I'm cool with it being about 20 25 percent of, of of the content being the motivational rah-rah stuff but really I want the how to use my WordPress site stuff I want the tools so before we go into that discussion, though, because that's going to, I think, bring a little bit of discussion, I'm going to go into the Q&A app and see if we have any questions out there that we can address. So what do we have here? Christopher Vogelman says, howdy. He'd like to know how we determine which groups are valuable versus rah-rah self-esteem cheerleading groups or the misery loves company kind. <laughs> How do we determine that? Who would like to take that first? We haven't heard from Lisa or Christine last one, so Lisa? Yeah. In my own personal experience, and I've visited many different groups, many of them are large and it's pretty much the same agenda every time and you have a speaker and this sort of thing. The type of group that I personally am looking for and I have a hard time finding, and a, not online but face-to-face -face communication, is more of a mastermind group where you have a small group of people and let's say you focus in you know, for entrepreneurs or small business owners and you focus in on that particular business and you really get down to really helping that person with the business. So you get rid of all the fluff and all the you know, motivational speakers and all that sort of thing and do that. And I find those type of groups, at least in the Denver area, are hard to find. Yeah, you know, that's interesting. I, I agree with you. I think they're hard to find too. Anybody else want to comment? I'll share, Ronnie. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep. Go ahead, okay. Christy. Yes. I'm so happy that I joined this HOA. Thank you for having me because it's it's helping me see things from another perspective. One thing that I'm recognizing amongst the guests on this panel right now is we are people of action. And I think where the disconnect happens for the woe is me types of groups um, to the ones that are really progressive are people who are either just stagnant or the ones that are taking action. So I, mm -hmm. for the women's group that my, my best friend and I formed, we always say we're very laid back in our style. It's not really formal per se. And we always say it's not one of those types of women's groups, whatever that means. But we know what that means. It, we don't want it to be a crutch for individuals. So in my personal message, I'm always focused on mindset because that's my message. However, the second component to the formula is action. And so there's a balance between knowing what you need emotionally, but like Nate said and everyone else, taking action on the primary objective, which is to grow our businesses. So great conversation. Well, you know, that brings up a question. As the owner of the group, if you see people in there who are not really following through on the action part. What do you do to help motivate them to do that? And at what point do you realize 
well, you know, I'm trying to motivate them into action. I'm trying to motivate them into action, and they're just not taking it. And at that point, is it still valuable for the group to have them in the group? And is it valuable for them to stay in the group? If, I, if, if that was directed toward me, I'd love to answer that. For me, I do believe we cannot motivate anyone. Motivation for me, I believe, comes from within. Uh, Dr. Simone mentioned self-empowerment, which to me is the most important thing to focus on. Instead of relying on external, we should be relying on this internal for that m motivation. So for me, I inspire through my action. I demonstrate to the women in my network what it means to apply the things that we're learning and so that we can grow. So I just demonstrate it. And, and if the women in the group are not taking action, does that, does that kind of detract from the group, do you think? Or do you just kind of hope that they stay with it and at some point they will be ready to take that step? That's a great question. I take them in rings. I, I look at it kind of like circles. And so they're, they're, they're always going to be, you know, the, sh the watchers, the people who are just the spectators. Then you're going to have the ones in the middle that kind of participate. Then you're going to have the inner ring who are the ladies who are really leading that network. So it's not just my girlfriend and I. There's a group of us that are taking action and showing the others what to do. So they're welcome to stay. Um, but we've developed a culture where we don't, we don't whine, W-H-I-N-E. We don't whine and we don't, we've created a culture where people won't post that kind of stuff. On, on in our network, so that's the culture we've created. We don't whine; we empower ourselves. We take action. Thank you so much for your perspective. I want to go to Melanie and Kitty because you guys run the Women in Business. Is that correct? Hangout or your both in partners? Business today? Yes. Women in Business today. Today. And many of your topics are on your awesome HOA are about kind of the emotional side of it. So what do you find in your audience? Do you find that those topics draw more people to your show than when you focus on sort of the business tools stuff? Or is that what most people want to talk about is the support and the motivation? What's your experience there? Well, um, I'll jump in before Kitty gives her, her um, opinion. Uh, we try on the Women in Business Today weekly broadcast to really listen to the needs of our audience. So we have monthly planning sessions where we you know, plan about four months ahead on our topics and what guests we'll have on. Um, but it all boils down to sometimes that can shift if the needs of our audience say, uh, you know, a half hour was not enough to cover that topic. So we want a continuation of that topic. And what I'm seeing is we, we, are, uh, we are, I think we're in a, a place in time where women, whether they're becoming entrepreneurs or they're going back to school or they're finding themselves as single parents again or for the first time, uh, this gives them a, a venue to voice their concerns. and. Uh, we we use the comment tracker that where uh, people the viewers can uh, kind of help each other through it so that we personally don't have to address those concerns on the show. But our goal is to um, empower women in business today and give them those tools. But yes, I will admit that sometimes we go off the rail slightly because we do want to. Uh, Fill a need for our audience at that particular time. Okay. Thank you. Great answer. Kitty, yeah. what would you like to add to that? And please yeah. do a plug for your show and when is it on and what time? Oh, um, oh goodness. It's at US time, 3, three o'clock Eastern and, oh, am I going to get this right? No, 6 o'clock Eastern and 3 o'clock Western seaboard. Oh goodness, PST, whatever it is. Um, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> I get so 
so confused with the times. I missed a show because of daylight savings. It's just ridiculous. Um, <laughs> I have to say, I agree with everything that Melanie said, but we do start from the standpoint of teaching a serious subject or talking about a, an informed subject. So whether we're talking about entering into higher education, whether we're talking about the sales funnel, whether we're talking about relationship marketing, and it, there's always a serious core to it. And if we have to interpret that by talking about the emotional stuff to get the point across, then I think that that's the way that most of us go. I mean, the, the panel's fairly split. There's two introverts on there and there's two extroverts. So, you know, we have a, a, a wide range of weaving. I mean, I'm quite hard-headed and pra pragmatic, so a lot of what I say is not touchy-feely. Um, but yeah, I think we do try and balance it, and I think we're we're very aware to try not to go always down the emotional route. That's actually why I like your show because you do have kind of a diverse panel in your group of with different kinds of opinions and different kinds of outlooks, and so it's always a really well-rounded show. What day was that on at three p.m. Pacific, six p.m. East, uh, Eastern? Monday evenings. Monday yeah. evenings. Okay. So there you go. That's the plug for the Women in Business Today hangout show, which is really great. Thank you. Dr. Simone, you are now a life coach and business coach, but your background is in psychology. And I find this, I, I've met several life and business coaches whose background were was psychology, and they left it and kind of went into the coaching. So what was it that, kind of made you want to go from straight on psychology into the coaching and how much of your coaching is really people coming to get you know kind of psychology support kind of that emotion support and how much of, of, of it is where they're really just trying to do the business or is it just so intermixed that it's kind of hard to tell where one stops and the other begins I would say that when people first come in, it appears to be very intermixed. Very shortly afterwards, it's pretty easy to tell what's the what's going on emotionally, and what may be stopping them, what may be blocking their their pursuit of success, and what are the business aspects. And we work with both. But as I said. But, and, I, and I really believe and have seen is that the emotional component is so strong that it really needs to be taken care of if it's blocking their ability to succeed financially and in their business. It does need to be taken care of first. And fortunately, there's a lot of ways that that can be done and that it can be done fairly quickly. More and more these days, we have techniques that are really incredibly rapid. Uh, I, I made the switch because I wanted to have a wider impact on people. I wanted to help more people and a greater diversity of people. And I had a background in business, and I thought combining the two would be a good idea for me. And I haven't regretted it. I really enjoy what I'm doing and helping people with, again, the, the emotional component, and then watching while they can flower and really achieve what it is they want to. Awesome. Thank you so much for that perspective. And I have to wonder if this kind of surge that we're seeing in popularity of life coaches and coaching, which is kind of, to me, when I hear life coach or business coach, I think of that as being ongoing emotional support as well, which is why I always call myself a consultant <laughs> and not a coach because I don't want to do that. <laughs> I want to help with the business tools, but the emotional stuff, I'll send them to Dr. Simone. But what I'm wondering is, are we seeing that big kind of surge in popularity of life coaches because people really want therapy, but they don't like the stigma of the word going to a psychologist or a counselor and getting therapy. And I'm going to direct this to Lisa Bonsino because of some of her background experience. I think you might be a good person to answer this. Well, uh, that's interesting because there certainly are a lot of life coaches. <laughs> 
And uh, I've never thought of it in terms of, well, maybe it's a uh, replacement for therapy. I've never used a life coach, so uh, I'm not really sure. But I would say that uh, I, don't, I don't think there is, uh, in terms of qualifications, to be a life yeah. coach, I think anyone can pretty much do it if they'd like to, correct? And if they, if they feel that, and I know life coaches that don't have a degree, and so I don't know what the, I may be wrong in terms of qualifications. Well, you know, it's funny because when you asked that, I was nodding yes. <laughs> Dr. Simone was nodding no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think like anything else, it's the quality of the life coach because you're right, I've seen a lot of people call themselves life coaches. Right. Who, haven't had any of that kind of background, but may but there Press are present company, company excluded. <laughs> right. So, Dr. Simone, go ahead. I, I just wanted to say that if anybody is looking to get assistance by a coach, they should definitely get assistance by a certified coach because they have had training. They've had hours of training educationally and hours of working with people beforehand. So, make sure that they're certified. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm looking, thank you for that, I, I agree. So look for a certified coach if you're going to get one. Nate, I'm going to go to you because you're put, posting some stuff in chat here. You said, it, if it begins with women to come together on common issues and get a good starting point, that's great. But if it stays there, as far as strategy goes, it would be limiting. And I think that was going back to the, the last question. When does it become a crutch? Uh, yeah, I was also responding to Christine's uh, post a little bit ahead. It says, my question to the panel, if business women's networking groups are to focus on business strategy, development, tools, etc., then why have a distinct group for women? And someone asked my thoughts, so that's that's when I said that. So that's what it was uh, more closely pertaining to as an answer to Christine's question. But yeah, so if it, if it begins with there, because, you know, certainly it, from a starting point, if men have a group or women have a group, or a certain age range has a group to deal with those immediate uh, common interests, uh, like young people in business, women in business, these things, that's great. But if it stays there, then as far as strategy goes, you're shooting yourself in the foot because, great, now you can only deal and strategize for a certain age range or a certain gender, and that, that just seems really limiting. So if it starts there, uh, great. But I, I think the idea, especially if you're wanting to grow business, is, is grow outward, expand. So eventually, it, I think it should be including as many possible uh, clients and colleagues as, as you can. Uh, that just seems like a sound strategy. Great. And Nate, that's, and Nate, that's why Women in Business Today, we did have uh, the apple cart turned over when we had a male guest on because the comment was from one of the viewers was, oh, so you can't find a qualified woman, huh? So why do you have a group like this? And it's like, oh my goodness. Uh, so, warning, we will have more men on our show because we, you know, uh, the groups for women, you know, they're, they're originally set up because women do have a desire to express more generally and traditionally where men just you know get to the point, stick to the agenda, go uh, and, I, and maybe that tradition will will change uh, as more stay-at-home dads uh, develop you know their communication skills because they have to communicate with their kids like why don't you like this cereal you know <laughs> but uh, yeah we have to we have to be all inclusive but uh, you know we're targeting into the the needs where you know if if you if you join a group where you are you feel more comfortable to open up then that is the group for you and if you join a group where your need is to open up, but they don't have time to open up, then then you should you should not force yourself to stay in that group. Right. Well, and some of the groups are social. I mean, it, it, you know, that's a big part of it. And I think that's what you really have to look at is visit a visit a group and see if it's something that might uh, you would like. And I've also found that even with the women's groups. Usually there are, you know, one or two men show up and uh, they are never excluded. I mean, most of these groups do welcome men, uh, although they are, you know, maybe the you know, women's business professional group or whatever. So it all depends on your own individual needs, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, 
I, I love these comments, and I, we have a comment from an anonymous sort of troll kind of person, but I still think his <laughs> comments are valid. And this person goes by the name of Justin Opinion, which I actually think is clever, <laughs> for if you're not going to tell your real name. But he says, what issues has gender got to do with business these days? Are we suggesting women have different emotions, capabilities, a smaller population in the workforce? I know many men who will view a woman who is publicly participating in women's business network groups as one who is looking for some advantage they do not have in marketing to this group and in turn view them with prejudice and an unfair competitor. So some of the men are getting riled up compared to just an opinion. So it begs the question, are they not able to compete on a level playing field? I think part of the answer to that is that the field has not been level exactly. for, for so long. <laughs> and I think one of the reasons that women are forming the groups is because they're trying to level that playing field. They haven't had a level playing field even today. Uh, in all those articles, they still say women get paid something like seventy something cents to 70 the dollar. Seventy cents to the dollar. Yeah, that yeah. the man gets paid for the same job. So I think that right there is answers the question of what is the necessity for the women's groups. I also think that there is a difference in the way women and men operate. Now it's been my personal experience out in the workforce when I was working in collaborative groups that when I had a group that was majority of women we weren't really worrying about who got the credit and who got this and who got what we were really focused on getting the task done and bringing our services to the public and getting them to you know benefit from them and really helping the community Whereas in the collaborations that had a lot of male kind of alpha types on it, they spent so much time sort of trying to be the top dog and <laughs> cutting the other ones down. And the women on there were sitting here looking at each other like, come on, can you guys stop pissing on each other's legs and can we get to the task at hand? <laughs> so I'm sorry, Nate, correct me if I'm wrong there, but this again has just been my personal experience. Did anybody else like to comment? Have they had similar experiences? And put your hand up by your face so I can see. Oh, nobody wants to tackle that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Melanie, go ahead. <laughs> for a long time, for and I've lived a many a generation, for a long time, women have been running the race like a three-legged thoroughbred. A three-legged thoroughbred. Uh, men have had the four legs. Women have gotten into the race late with three legs to run. And it's only been through the passage of time, decade upon decade, and we're still going to see this as more time passes, that uh, as we are, as we now claim our place on the track, that we have four legs and we're running right with you. Move over. That's, I think, the attitude that is uh, gaining momentum, and that is that would be scary to any group of people, regardless of gender or any society where you have these um, uh, the outliers coming closer to the center. And then they say, wait, we're going to lose control because they're gaining on us. And I think that's the point in time we are in. And we will not solve this problem. We just have to let the four-legged horses know that we have four legs now and we're running. Great. I like the uh, anthology there. Or and that was a rah-rah right there, rah-rah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> rah-rah analogy. Well, Nate, since you're our kind of token guy on here today, <laughs> uh, how do you feel? Do you find that the women's groups are at all intimidating or threatening to you, or your place in the workplace as a man? Um, well, funny story. So I watched, this will make sense in a minute, I watched Hunger Games Catching Fire, the, the most recent one yesterday, 
And the whole premise is this governmental structure society, they're, it's so fragilely held together, they perceive, that if there's any threat from the outside, which is the common people, that it'll just implode. So they take extreme, over-the-top measures far beyond necessary to maintain their sense of structure and stability. So I think that's a very similar uh, analogy, is that there's certain guys in the workplace, and I think the playing field is being leveled, uh, you know, more of a grassroots movement with women groups if it starts there, ultimately incorporation inclusive it, and this is the idea so if it starts with women then they pull in men CEOs you know other top level people in, in the male category and they can come together they're like okay now we see women as our equals men are our equals you know and the playing field becomes more level so it's certainly I, I see it as a grassroots movement but there are still those people who are so threatened by the idea of uh, some woman or or something like that coming in and stealing their job or, or whatever and that they are going over the top far beyond what's reasonable and necessary because they feel like their power structure is threatened so I think that is an issue but I think the solution is this grassroots movement starting with the women's groups and then you pull in more and more men and you're like okay look we're different but we're the same business is business and and that'll level the playing field so basically it boils down to it's kind of a fear reaction to the to the fact that now there's even more competition because the women are entering the game as well. Yeah, I think that's more fair than not. Yeah, okay. So we are at about 10 minutes out. At this point, I'm going to go back to the Q&A, see if anybody else has put any questions in there, and then we're going to start the wrap-ups because we have such a large panel today. I'm going to give everybody a chance to say goodbye, give their final thoughts, anything that they want to say on the issue. But let me go to Q&A. Nothing in there, so great. We'll get right started. Christine. Yes. Any, anything mm -hmm. that you want to leave us with, including your thoughts on the topic, and also if you have any promos for any events coming up, this is a great time to give it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, this is a topic that we could talk about all day long in my book. <laughs> um, I do believe, just to my closing thoughts, there's a shift that's happening and that Nate was speaking about this grassroots movement. I kind of see social media, more specifically Google Plus and what's happening here with women and men coming together and, and in this vein of entrepreneurship, we're in an entrepreneurship lifestyle. Let's face it, that's the 21st century. So I believe that we are part of the shift that's taking place where it becomes that level playing field. I really, really believe that. Um, and so in closing, for me, I just wanted to thank you so much for being here. I really enjoyed each and every one on the panel. I think this was my first official time uh, hanging out with the Nate, so that's awesome. He's been a friend of mine for a couple of years. Um, in my next show, I'm a host of my own show called CLB Live and the debut was about a month or so ago with Simon T. Bailey. I have two shows coming up this summer uh, featuring Regina Cooper who is an author of Miscarriage of a Dream and in August with Jess and Nora who are most people know them from Jess Scott and You and everyone knows Jess and Nora so they'll be hanging out with me in August uh, to launch their new venture so I'm really excited about that. So you can find all of that on YouTube uh, at Christine L. Bowen Live. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. And Dr. Simone, please unmute yourself before you start. Oh, we lost you. We'll come back to you. Kitty Walker. Um, fascinating conversation, isn't it? And as Christine said, we could just go on and on and on forever. Um, I, I really would like just to say that it can be a crutch and that you know, sometimes we need a little crutch to help us going, but you have to get rid of that crutch at some point. And I agree, you stagnate completely if you just stay within women's groups. Um, thanks a lot for having me on the show, Maloney. It's been great. I've really enjoyed watching your show, so it's been great to come on. Um, and we, of course, do Women in Business today, and Jess is one of our um, compadres on that. So, yeah, join us on a Monday night. It'll be awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. And your website is avidmode.com, A-V-I-D-M-O-D-E.com, for benefit of people who are just listening. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Lisa. 
Yes, well, I totally enjoyed the panel, and thank you so much for inviting me. And uh, I guess what I will say is uh, the Women's Collaborative for Colorado, we have an event coming up in July. <laughs> I don't have the date. It's around, it's, it's maybe July 26th, I'm not sure, but uh, Women's Co Collaborative Colorado, if anyone is in Colorado. And what we are going to be talking about is uh, uh, more corporate women and dealing with childcare. And that's a whole other issue. And so that's what we try to do. We focus on pay equity, uh, all different sorts of things, and that's our focus right now. So thanks a lot. And then SundanceSocialMedia.com. Thank you. <laughs> and will they find information on those events at SundanceSocialMedia.com? I will put it there. And then there's Women'sCollaborativeColorado.com also. And then there is a Facebook page, Women's Collaborative for Colorado. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us, Lisa. My pleasure. Melanie. I wanted to point out, introduce Rain Dowell. She's in the panel. And uh, I'm going to announce it, Rain. Hold on. She has agreed to be the co-host on the Lights, Camera, HOA weekly show. Ooh, congrats. Yeah. yeah. So uh, this, was, this was just from this week. So Monday will be her, her debut. We've already announced it within our social network. So uh, love you, Ray. And for, <laughs> for our Audible audience, it's BigUptickSocial.com, Melanie Hall, uh, and I absolutely want to make sure that uh, I am connected to everyone on this panel, and I, I would like you to connect to me. I think you are just a big value, and Melani, oh, thank you so much for the invite. This was um, just incredible, and a crutch, remember, is temporary lean on. Get off of it when, as soon as possible. Yes. Yes, thank you for that reminder. And, I, and I'll take this moment to remind everybody in here on the panel to please leave any of your information in the comments under the event listing so people can find you and find you. Nate. Oops. Uh, yeah, thanks so much for having me. This is great. Um, the best way to find me is simply Twitter, uh, at HangoutWithNate. Um, so anything to do with Google integration or learning about it, catching on to it, using it for your personal or business needs, uh, contact me there. That's easy. I currently do not have a home. I'm a free floater around the, the Internet looking for a home. But um, I, I find it's more beneficial for me to just join other people who already have shows and things rather than do my own. If someone's already doing it, eh, join them. So I, I think that's more... more Certainly, the philosophy I go with, you know, instead of trying to do something or one up someone or be better than someone else, join forces and make that the best. Um, inclusiveness, right? Um, so that's it. Uh, I, as soon as we're done here, my family and I are headed to Aspen for the weekend. So, uh, fun stuff. Have fun. Woo! Little vacation time. Have fun on your holiday. Is great. Thank you for joining us. And Rain, congratulations on your co-host status. Woohoo! <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Milani, for having me. Uh, it's been a wonderful experience, and, and I've really enjoyed hearing everybody's opinions on today's show. Uh, I just want to um, uh, I, uh, reiterate the point um, that one of my biggest fears is public speaking and, and speaking on video or hangouts on air. Um, but it's pretty hard to convince uh, other people to grow their online presence, <laughs> tackle their fears if I haven't done it myself. So, um, so uh, you are putting that crutch away. Good for you. Yeah. So I really, I, and I really agree with, um, I really agree with Christine that it's it's about leading by example, um, and just practice makes perfect. And uh, thank you again so much for having me on the show. And, and you're just a great bunch of people. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us and congrats on facing your fears and leaving your own crutches <laughs> behind. And I'm your host, Melani MacDonald. TGIF Business Networking Hangout happens twice a month on the first and third Fridays at 9 a.m. PST, noon EST. The next scheduled TGIF is actually on July 4th, so I'm not really sure yet <laughs> if I'm going to 
find or do or have interest in doing a really heavy business episode, I may decide to take the holiday off, or I may decide to just have some fun and make it open networking and fun. The one after that, though, is on July 18th, and on July 18th, our topic is going to be business collaborations and team building, and my guests are going to be Jessica Duell and Jim Alt. So that's another great topic, team building and collaboration. Please join me then. If you are one of those those people that are, what did they call me, the instrumentals, and you're really kind of more task-oriented than route oriented I do have a private community on Google Plus for members of my club, Meilani's Blooming Business Club, and we keep the Rara to the 20% range and put a lot of great tools and resources and how-tos up in there. So just go to MeilaniMcDonald.com if you're looking for such a business networking group. It is not women only, it is women and men, but people who are looking more for the tools. So that's my plug for myself. I hope you all enjoyed this show. Thank you so much to everybody down there in the peanut gallery for joining us today. Have a great day. Bye-bye.